Hello, it's Wednesday. When I look back at what I did the previous week. I painted some orcs. They're finished. Yay! Ah, big sigh of relief there, slash also a little bit of desperation. Um, these took ages. Oh, they took so long. If it had just been like painting ten shooter boys, I'd have done them in two days. Like one weekend, I'd have done ten shooter boys. But... They were not just 10 Shooter Boys. They were 13 very different, very characterful Orc models. Um, I mean, granted I didn't have to paint the boss knob much. I mean, I repainted his shoulder pads to tie him in with the rest of the kill team a bit more. But, yeah, 13 very individual Orc models, which takes a lot longer to paint than just doing a squad. Like, I got all of the, the three shooter boys and the the commando, this guy, this fella, done really early on. And then it was kind of just slogging away at a bunch of different specialists, which is what took the bulk of the time. And when you're switching from painting shooter boys to painting a single burner boy, um, you can't really batch paint anymore at that point, and that really slowed everything down. So, I, which I wasn't anticipating. Um, if I'm going to paint a kill team in the future for myself, even for someone else actually, I would rather paint, say, five of one kind of troop that can go in the kill team than five of another kind of troop that can go in the kill team. So it takes space marines, for example. I'd rather paint, like, the five intercessors than five reavers, you know, that you can get in the combat squad box, for example, in batches and build it up that way until you've got enough models that you can... Um, select a kill team that's worth 100 points from them. These guys, I came up with my list for a 100 point kill team, rummaged through my bits box, built enough of of the, uh, built all of the models, and then painted them, and that was, was a horrible way to do it. So, it was really, really time consuming, kind of just soul destroying. I really hate these models at the moment. I'm, I'll like them a few days from now. Once they're on bases and they're all done, I don't have to think about them and can just play with them. I'll probably like them, but at the moment I'm really like, Ugh, I'm so dissatisfied with them. I'm happy with the Shooter Boys though. Shooter Boys have turned out well, but also the Shooter Boys have been done for the longest amount of time. Um, one thing I'm not that happy with on all of them is their leather. Um, I've actually been kind of a quandary about my leather, because I feel like my, my leather game, there are some notes that my partner made for me on my leather. Very help, very handy thing having an objective person going through all of your some some of your examples of your stuff and choosing out which bits are good and which bits are bad. It was very handy for me. Um, yeah, I feel like my leather game has been slipping. Like uh, a year ago, I feel like I was better at painting leather than I am now, and it's all been down to some color choices and getting a little bit lazy. So in the past, and you can look at all of my previous videos for this. Go all the way back to the Raptors Space Marine video. I'll put a link there. You can see that I used um, VMA Burnt Umber as a base coat for my leather until it was nice and solid. Then I'd use, I think it was Ushabti Bone to do scratches. Then I would do a coat of VMA Burnt Umber again over that as a kind of um, wax coat, essentially. Then I would go back with Ushabti Bone and paint more in. Then I would do a little few more scratches with, I think it was Screaming Skull or it might have been Pallid Witch Flesh. Either way, that was the method I used, and it was a bit more time consuming than the method I used on these guys, which is to paint the leather with Rhinox Hide and then do an edge highlight with Flayed One Flesh. It was faster, doesn't look as good though. That's the ultimate conclusion. Um, and in, the odd thing is, like, the leather straps that I've done, so here's one, there's a leather strap. Looks kind of okay, but it could be it's not as good as ones that I painted in the past. But I also have this other method of doing leather, which was adopted from the Pomaris Psyker that I did recently. Which results in leather that looks like this. Which looks great. And I think is an even better version of leather than the leather I used to paint. 
So, you know, I changed my recipe and I did this. This is slightly more time consuming, but for some reason I decided to do all of the straps in this Rhinox Hide Flayed One Flesh combo and it doesn't look as good. Um, the biggest problem with it is Flayed One Flesh is actually super desaturated. Better to use a Shabti Bone or Screaming Skull, which have got a bit more yellow in them. Um, but also Rhinox Hide is very, very red. Kind of want to use something a little bit yellower um, for the leather straps that for the look I was going for. This, the recipe for this is on my Patreon if you want to find out how I painted this backpack. It's the same as the um, Promara Psyker trench coat over there and there's a colour guide for it. I'm not going to get into it right now. But yeah, that's a thing that I think I've been slipping on and I and kind of vowed to work on that. However, I don't have much stuff with leather coming up in the future for I have my shock jump dragster, which I'm going to start painting next. I've got to finish my Imperial Guard so that they can be sold. And I've already painted all the leather on this this guy, and all the leather on the Commissar is going to be black. So, <clears throat> completely different recipe. Um, I guess I've got Bad Rook who I need to finish at some point. He's had a matte coat on and he looks much nicer now that he's been matte coated. Less shiny. But yeah, don't have much that's actually got leather, com leather on it to practice on in the near future. Um, yeah, Orc Kill Team, they're complete. There will be a video detailing the project. I don't, I don't know, it's going to be called Finish Your Hobby. Um, it's just where I do a big project from start to finish. This is a big project for me. And I basically do one of these little voiceover revlogs every so often during each stage and I talk about how I'm feeling at each stage and what I'm doing and the thought process behind it. Um, so you know, it's a little bit like a combined work in progress vlog about one project down into one video. So that'll be coming up soon, next week probably. It'll go straight onto YouTube. <coughs> I'm also going to be doing a video on how to make the bases that you saw in the uh, Bad Moon Orcs Boys video, because that's how, yeah, there's the tutorial for that. I'm going to be doing a video on how to do the bases in that, because people have asked, and I need to make um, 13 bases in that style for this Orc Kill Team. So I'm going to be doing that on a video, and that will be going up around the same time. Again, that's not going to be early on Patreon, that will just go up because it's just a basing tutorial, it's not a big deal. Basing tutorials are pretty easy. So there we go, the Orc Kill Team. I'll put a nice picture from my phone or something um, around here, where you can see them all arrayed nicely on my painting table, rather than all blurry like this. I don't have time to go through all of them individually. Yeah, there will also probably be pictures on my Facebook. But yeah, they need their bases for, um, to be done soon. So what else have I been up to? I have uh, stripped my night haunts. I need to repair this. It's a bit dangly. Stripped my night haunts. Um, they actually stripped quite well. I left them in by a strip for two days. Two full days, for like 48 hours. Um, and the paint just kind of fell off them that I'd already put on there when I ran it underwater, which was great because I thought if they get, was going to have to scrub them significantly I might damage them. And the only bit of damage that I've encountered is this uh, dangly bit here, which to be honest that could snap off and it wouldn't be a big deal. But I'm going to try and pair it with a little bit of plastic cement, but it might not go well. Um, but there the painting tutorial for November. They'll be running alongside the Orc uh, vehicle tutorials, which will be coming up piecemeal. All of that stuff you'll be able to access early on Patreon. So if you want to get early access to that stuff, then you know, go subscribe to my Patreon. It's $5 for early access to videos. $10 for access to co written colour guides for things that may never get a video, such as that Primara Psyker. He's never going to get a video. But you can find out how I painted all the stuff on him on the Patreon. Um, so yeah, Night Haunt's coming up. I'm going to be using... The reason why I stripped them was I changed how I was going to paint them. I'm going to be using some fluorescent green paint. 
that Green Stuff World sent me. Because um, they know I like fluorescents, because they've seen my basing videos for Necromunda. This stuff would have been great for that. Wish I'd had it at the time. They've got a big old fluorescent range, which um, is interesting, but to be honest, I already have other fluorescent paints from other brands. These are both Vallejo. Uh, these are also perfectly good. And they smell slightly nicer than the Green Stuff World one. Because um, Vallejo paints smell like candy. Green Stuff World paints smell like death. It's not quite that bad. They don't smell as nice as other paint brands for some reason. Which is an issue when you're spraying them through an airbrush and atomizing everything. Even through the mask, you can still smell them. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be using some of this here. Fluorescent green paint. Maybe a little bit of the old phosphorescent glow in the dark paint may make a recurrence. But it means that under UV light, hang on, where's my torch? That's my torch. Here's some fluorescent green paint. Here's uh, some darkness. Just turn these lights off. And there is a UV light activating that paint. So yeah, it is UV reactive, but then so is this one, and so is this pink one, which I've used to paint demonettes in the past, and it looks awesome. As you can see, my hand is not being lit because not UV reactive. So that's coming up, painting, painting spooky ghosts with fluorescent green paint. Um, I'd quite like to get my hand on the fluorescent yellow as well, so I can do a kind of transitional thing. Basically, I like Ghostbusters, and I want my night haunts to look a little bit like Slimer. <laughs> that makes sense? Yeah. They're going to slime you. That's how they're going to work. Spooky ghosts going to slime. Ectoplasm. That's a the thing. There's not enough ectoplasm in Nighthaunt armies. More ectoplasm. I've, I've gone off topic, haven't I? Yeah. So yes, Nighthaunts stripped, going to get fluores fluorescentized. So they're going to be all spooky and they can go to a rave. Um, the Shock Jump Dragster is going to be the vehicle, the orc vehicle I'm going to paint. It's going to be split up into a few videos, probably. I think I'm going to show the entirety of painting the whole kit in one video because this is a big kit. <laughs> and, you know, once you've painted one bit of bodywork, you don't need to see how I paint the rest of it. It's all just extrapolating from a few techniques. So it's going to be mostly focused on, these are the techniques I use to paint vehicles. So that's coming up. I'm going to start that soon. need to prime that today. Or tomorrow. Soon anyway. Um, boo -boo 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 -boo. What else? I'm waiting on some stuff from Artel W miniatures that I've ordered from the, from uh, Russia. I believe it's coming. I'm looking forward to that. One of the one of the models is for is a orc war boss for a, con a commission. One of the other models is an orc war boss for me. The big one. I don't know if you've seen it. I'll find a picture and I'll put it there. It's huge. Um, the other model I'm getting is uh, the female. Imperial Guard Colonel that they've got, I can't remember the name um, should also appear there and that's an excellent looking sculpt, I hope it lives up to the uh, the pictures but I was just, I saw it and I was just like oh, that's a pretty model I want to paint that and I'm all for more uh, female models in the, Imper in the Imperial Guards which is not going to be part of the Imperial Guard army that I'm selling but she might be the commander of an Imperial Guard kill team that uses all of their models in the future. Um, that might be fun, because they've got a whole range, all in that similar style, and they would make a good kill team. Probably have to get two boxes of them, though, because, you know, Imperial Guard are cheap. Um, I think that's mostly it. Yes, yes. Can't think of anything else off the top of my head. There's a squig video. You know that squig I painted in last week's work in progress? Um, I'll put a picture up. There you go. That squig. Big old squig. His video, part, uh, part one of Zarbag Skits basically, is already up on Patreon. Has been for a few days now. Um, the rest of Zarbag Skits probably won't get done for another for you know, another month. 
currently it's winning the voting on Patreon for what video to do in December. So it's got a huge lead. Quite frankly, it's hands down going to be the winner. I think even if everyone else that hasn't voted that is on that is a patron votes for anything else, it won't beat Zarbags Gets at this point. It's got such a big lead. Um, so Zarbags Gets, I'm calling it, um, is going to be December's uh, painting tutorial. And I've already done the first part because I already painted that squig, and the video is already up. And that won't be that video won't be going live until the rest of Zarbags Gets goes live. Um, and then it'll go live like a week before the second part of Zarbags gets. So, that's probably going to be exclusive to patrons for like a whole month at this point. Ad advertising free. You don't get any adverts when it's exclusive to patrons. So there's, an, there's a, a thing for you. The rest of you will all have to wait for the Shock Jump Dragster videos that are coming up. They're the next in the queue. And that's it. I've got some stuff for sale on eBay. Um... Steel Hearts Champions and Garrett Weavers from Shades by a Starter Set. They are for sale. Um, well, they're on Buy It Now because I'm not in a rush to get money from those. But uh, they also, that's about what I would ch charge if you wanted to commission those warbands to be painted in different colour schemes. Um, so there'll be links in the doobly doo for to my eBay sellers page where you can go see the stuff that I've currently got for sale if you would like any of it. Uh, it helps out the channel ridiculously well if you buy buy stuff from the eBay store. Um, far more than anything else, to be honest. <laughs> Turning models into money is very helpful um, and will be very, very, very useful this, this com uh, coming capitalism season that we've got coming up starting soon comment below about the stuff you've been painting comment below about how you've been finding fluorescent paints um, I did that colour shift video which went up yesterday the review of that stuff this stuff I've actually, I'm actually far more likely to use because fluorescent paints are just really really bright under normal lighting and they're only special under UV lighting whereas those colour shift paints are a bit weird and you can tell that they're not normal paints you can use these just as normal paints which is why I like them to get really bright colours but uh, yeah, that was a thing that I did. That's about it, I think. You can subscribe to the channel there. Oh, it's popped up. Patreon's over there. Uh, who knows what's up there? YouTube decides. And there's my social medias where you can go and at me all of your pictures of models and such like things. That's it for this week. Bye.